Welcome here to the presentation of uh, the Dragonfly 28 series, where we will uh, show you what uh, the Dragonfly uh, 28 is, is all about. I'm Jens Kvorning, the owner of uh, Kvorning Boats here in Denmark, where we design and manufacture uh, the Dragonfly trimaran range since 1967. The Dragonfly 28 is, uh, is a big category uh, boat, uh, so it's also for offshore sailing. The boat is, uh, I always say, our, is our Swiss army knife. Uh, the boat offers so many things where you can sail the boat for, for cruising with family and friends, single-handed or just with your family. Perfect is uh, two adults or, and two kids or also um, three kids. Uh, the boat has five bunks of two meters, which, which is very unusual, unusual for this size of trailable boat. But also for, uh, for three adults is, is fine. The boat looks small, but you will see. The boat is also trailable in the sense that you can actually take the boat, drive the boat with your, with your 4x4 to ramp. You don't need any, uh, any other assistance from outside. So all alone, you can launch the boat, one person, without uh, letting the trailer go into the water. So just drive the trailer to the, uh, to the edge of the water so the, so the wheels uh, just touch the water. Launch the boat, step the mast on land or in the water, set sails and off you go. This is a very, very unique thing that this size of boat that you can do this, which opens so many doors for, for new cruising grounds. The Dragonfly 28 is not just a day sailor, so you can actually go offshore uh, and you can go short distance, long distance, even just afternoon trips. The boat is easy to set up for sailing. We have many clients who have been sailing here from Denmark up to the uh, top of the Baltic, to, uh, to, to top of Norway, down to the Medi Mediterranean, even to Lanzarote. So actually, uh, the limitation is actually just the, the skipper. Also, inside the boat, you will find all you need for longer passages. The boat has a, has a nice big cockpit, spray hood, also for, safe, uh, also for safe cruising. And not least, the features to go on shallow uh, waters, as you can beach the boat, you can dry out. The best anchorages are always free because nobody else basically goes there. So you have, it's a, it's a new world for, for cruising, which opens so many new doors. Because the Dragonfly 20 offers so big a variety of sailing, again, you have the cruising people, you also have the racing people, and we have younger people, but actually our biggest audience or our biggest group of clients is, yeah, you can say 60 plus sailors who have been sailing most of their lives in all kinds of conventional boats, but they just want to have a peek at this before it's too late. The Dragonfly 28 offers a wide range of speed potentials. In light winds, you're able to do wind speed actually, and in stronger winds, you are uh, going really fast, even up to, yeah, plus 20 knots. If you really push the boat, you know how to do it well, you're talking about 22, 23 knots boat speed. Uh, the boat is safe to sail and the boat has done very well, uh, has shown its potential in, in international uh, regattas and racing scenes, not just in medium winds, but also in very, very strong winds and where many other boats have failed, like the Silver Rudder some years ago, out of 400 boats, 21 boats made, the, made uh, to the finish line and this was first ship home. And now I will uh, let Peter take over and uh, he will take you around this fantastic boat. And uh, the more you look into details, you'll be surprised what uh, Peter can find for you. Have fun. Hi, my name is Peter and I'm very happy to introduce you here to the Dragonfly 28. The Dragonfly 28 comes in two versions. There's a touring version and then the performance version as the one you see here behind me. The touring version comes with another float design as the one you see here behind me. And then it's a shorter rig with a standard wide sails. The performance version comes with a taller rig than the touring version and has these wave piercing floats with more buoyancy than the 28 touring. The Dragonfly 28 is a trailable trimaran you can fold it in within minutes and you can put it directly onto a trailer from a slip and only has a total weight of 3.5 ton. You can one man lower the mast on the boat without using any kind of crane. The Dragonfly 28 is 2.54 meters wide when it's folded. The weight of the boat is 2,150 kilos and the weight of course depends on how much extra and how much gear you put inside the boat. The boat you see behind me is hull number 222 and is delivered to Norway. 
And with that amount of boats, the Dragonfly 28 has proven its success. The standout boat comes in white gel coat, but of course you can choose whatever color you would like for your boat. The anti-fouling is included in the price, but as you can see, the boat here behind me has the optional cover coat. The Dragonfly 28 has a starting price in the Touring version from 150,000 euros plus VAT. The Dragonfly 28 can be used in a lot of different ways. I can tell from my own experience that I have both used the boat for racing, for day sailing, and also for, for longer trips and longer vacations with family and friends. So it's the perfect boat because you can tow it after your car, you can beach it, and you can even go long distance and sail even faster with a big smile on your face. I'm very excited and looking very much forward to show you all the nice features on this fantastic boat. Here I'm standing right next to the bow of the Dragonfly 28. I just want to show some features here at the bow. Here you see the attachment of the, of the forest day where you also have the furler. The furler is handled back in the cockpit and from there you can also reef the Genoa. Here we also have this very nice pulpit. It gives you a lot of safety when walking around the boat, especially here at the bow, where you also have to fold out the bowsprit once in a while. The pulpit here is a standard feature for the Dragonfly 28. Here on the foredeck, you'll also find this standard navigation light that comes with the boat. The same goes for these standard stainless steel mooring cleats. The Dragonfly 28 comes with a two meter long aluminum bowsprit. When not using the bowsprit or going into the harbor, this is the position for it. I'll now show you how to operate the bowsprit system. When folding out the bowsprit, you use the tag line to swing out the bowsprit. When the bowsprit is in position, you go out to the starboard wing and attach the side stay to the middle eye on the front of the wing. When that's done, you go back to the bow of the boat and pull in the pulley system to tighten the bowsprit. As you can see, the bowsprit system works on the outside of the boat. That means it's totally waterproof, watertight, and there's no bowsprit coming into the boat. And therefore, it doesn't take any space inside the boat. I will now demonstrate how to fold in the bowsprit. So as you can see here, it's also very easy to handle when folding in. I just want to briefly tell you a little bit about the bowsprit here. The small metal eye you see here is to attach the coat zero, the furling coat zero. Here in the front is the tag line for the asymmetric genica. The Dyneema lines you see here are the side stays for the bowsprit. Underneath here, you see the bob stay. These three stays keep the bowsprit in position. On the Dragonfly 28, we offer this optional port light here in the freeboard, and it gives you a lot more light inside of the forward cabin and gives you a more spacious feeling. On the whole Dragonfly range, and especially here also on the Dragonfly 28, we have specialized in making these shines. The shines have three functions. The first function is to guide the water away from the boat to make the boat more dry to sail. The second is that we give a lot more spacious feeling inside of the boat because we can make it wider in the forward cabin. The third function is that we have a very narrow hull in the waterline. Plus we have less wet surface and therefore we can experience higher speeds. For lifting or launching the Dragonfly 28, we have three lifting eyes. The two in the front you'll find here. This is the eye for lifting the boat in the front and is placed at the same position on the opposite side of the boat. The lifting eye in the back is in the attachment for the main sheet. Here I am behind the starboard aft wing and I want to show you this stainless steel swing wing fitting for the wing. And this stainless steel fitting is bolted directly into the fiberglass bulkhead. And the black cable you see here is the connection between the solar panel on the outrigger and the electrical system inside the boat. Here at the stern on the Dragonfly 28, we offer this port light. This port light 
will give a lot more spacious feeling inside the aft cabin and also bring some more lights into the cabin. This outlet you see here is the drain for the cockpit lockers. This nylon sheath is to protect the boat from the wing when the boat is folded. Under each wing you'll find this 10 mm diform wire. It's called the water stay. The water stay takes the forces from the buoyancy in the floats. The water stay is attached to the bulkhead in the aft cabin. And here the water stay has a threaded terminal that is attached into the wing. Here I'm standing in front of the front starboard wing. I just want to tell you a little bit about this stainless steel eye. This stainless steel eye has several functions. As you can see here, we have parked the extension for the barber holder that we use for the Jenica. Here you have the support stay for the bowsprit. But you also use this stainless steel eye for the anchor bridle when anchoring. With this anchor bridle, you avoid fish tailing in the wind. Here I am next to the bow of the Dragonfly 28 Performance. As you see here on the performance, we have this wave piercing design. That means it cuts way better through the waves and it actually doesn't care whether it's above the water or underneath the water. What's also special about this design that we have the assembly of the float here in the waterline. That also means that we have the widest point of the float here in the waterline and you will have maximum buoyancy earlier than a traditional design. As you can see, the floats are actually further forward than the actual main hull. That means that we have a lot more diagonal stability when sailing downwind. It also means that we have more safety when pushing the boat. The barber holder for the Dragonfly 28 actually has two functions. The first function is to trim the genera when reaching to flat out the sail and have a better shape on the sail. The other function for the barber holder is to use this extension on the barber holder on the tack of the genica. You put this knife shackle on the tack of the genica to pull the genica out of the windshade of the mainsail. Then you have a lot more power when sailing dead downwind. Inside of the wing here, where you see all these bolts, we have a stainless steel fitting that is laminated into the wing. In this stainless steel fitting, we connect the float and the wing. Here you also see we have some nylon sheaths. They make the operation of the swing wing system a lot more smooth. So the swing wing system here takes no grease. You only have to wash it with fresh water once in a while. But we recommend to replace these nylon sheaths every 10 to 12 years. Maybe you have already spotted it, but we have a diagonal wire that runs under the trampoline here. This wire prevents the wing to move further forward. And because of this diagonal wire, there is no noise or no friction on the main hull when the boat is folded out. On the barb hull here, we have this low friction ring. The sheet from the genera goes through the low friction ring here, so you are able to trim the genera to the perfect shape and have the perfect gap between the mainsail and the genera. It's a very nice feature that you'll not normally see on normal cruising boats. And the barber holder line is led directly back to the cockpit so you can access it and trim it from there. Here on the side of the float, you see the attachment for the side stay. And right next to it, you'll see the optional solar panel that is glued on the deck of the float. It's wired directly into the boat and is connected with the electrical system and is charging the batteries. In this middle section of the float, you'll find this standard hatch that comes with the boat. It measures 49 centimeters times 37 centimeters. In here, you can store all kinds of extra equipment like extra sails so you don't have wet sails inside of the boat, anchor equipment, extra finders or whatever you want to bring on your tour. Here in the section between the hatch and the wing, we offer an optional foldable stainless steel mooring cleat. Here on the freeboard of the Dragonfly 28, both the touring and the performance version, we offer an optional rub rail to protect the boat or the color from any scratches when you're going into the marina. The rub rail protects the full length of the float. It is approximately in this height and you can get it in both a light gray and a black color.
The float is divided into sections by structural bulkheads. There is a bulkhead right here and underneath the front wing and underneath the wing in the back. These two bulkheads make sure that your equipment stays in this section and you don't have to pick it up right in the back of the float. Here on the aft beam I want to show you various things. First I want to show you the different sheeting points for the extra sails like the Code Zero and the Asymmetric Jenica. The sheeting point in here is for the Code Zero when sailing upwind in light wind conditions. If you're going more downwind or reaching with the Code Zero, you can move the sheeting point further out in this position you see here in the middle eye. This sheeting point is also the standard sheeting point for the Jenica when using it. The next is that we have all these different lines. The blue line you see here is for the side stays to tighten up the rig after you have folded out. The red line you see here is the preventer for the mainsail. We use that to trim the mainsail because we don't have any kicker on the boat. So this has actually a double function as trimming the mainsail, but also for safety reasons, so you will not make a surprise jibe. The green line here on top is the barber hole. That's a trim option for the Genoa, so you can trim it more flat when you're reaching. All the lines here are led directly into the cockpit, so you can easily handle it from there. Here I am at the transom of this Dragonfly 28, and I just want to show you this swim ladder. It's very nice and can fold out, and you have great access to the transom of this float. Here on the transom we have two integrated steps that gives you great access to walk around here on the transom. And here on the very end of the transom we have this pad eye. You use this pad eye to tie up the light on the road trailer. Now I'm underneath the trampoline on the starboard side of the Dragonfly 28. This hatch gives you access to a watertight compartment. Here you can keep your emergency flares. You can access this compartment both from the inside of the boat and also here from the outside. This angle gives you a great view of the swing wing lines here underneath the trampoline. The swing wing lines are protected here in the pocket and will follow the trampoline when you're falling in and out the boat. Here I am at the transom and I just want to show you this navigation light. It comes standard with the boat. And this is a stainless steel mooring cleat and it's positioned in the same position on the other side of the hull. Here at the transom I just want to show you three other options for the Dragonfly 28. Here you see the inlet for the shore power. Here you see the power supply for the autopilot and I'll talk more about that later on. And here you see the handle for the shower here in the cockpit. And here on the opposite side you see the exhaust for the optional diesel heating. Here I just want to show you this mandatory escape hatch. It also allows a lot of light to get into the aft cabin. Here I'm standing next to the rudder of the Dragonfly 28 Performance. As you can see here, it has a very nice design and very well balanced. It is made out of fiberglass with a foam core. That means the rudder is buoyant and is actually very light. As you can see here, we have the control lines. The one I'm pointing at here is the one you pull up the rudder. Down here, that's the line you pull down the rudder. Here on the Dragonfly 28, we have developed a kick-up system and we have actually done that on the whole Dragonfly range. Here you see the spring-loaded cleat that will pop up if it's exposed to a certain force. That means the rudder will not sustain any substantial damage if it hits the ground. I will now demonstrate how this swing rudder actually works. So when you swing it down, you actually just release this uphole line. Then you just let the rudder float all the way down until it's buoyant. And then you actually just pull in, the, in this rudder down line to pull it all the way down in position. Here I'm standing next to the outboard engine of the Dragonfly 28. As you can see, it's a Honda. It's a 15 horsepower four-stroke gasoline engine. The engine is equipped with power tilt. That means you can tilt the engine 
electrically from the from the cockpit so you don't have to tilt it manually. It also equipped with electrical start so you can start it directly from the cockpit without starting it manually. The engine is also equipped with an alternator. That means the engine actually charges the batteries inside of the boat while running. The engine has an external fuel tank. It's 12 liters and is placed underneath this hatch. Later on, I'll show you how to access it so you can have a closer look. To give you even better maneuverability when motoring inside of the harbor, we have developed a system to connect the tiller and the engine when the engine is lowered. It's done by this link here, which you can place here in front of the engine. You can easily connect the link here from the cockpit. With the connection between the tiller and the engine, we now have parallel steering. Here I am on the deck of the Dragonfly 28. I just want to show some different features here on the deck. Here you see the forward hatch for the front cabin. It gives you a lot of light into the front cabin and gives you a more spacious feeling. As you can see, you can also open the hatch here so you can get some fresh air into the front cabin. This forward hatch is a part of the standard boat, so it comes with the Dragonfly 28. Right behind the forward hatch, you here see the extra solar panel. It's an optional feature here on the Dragonfly 28, and as you can see, it's glued onto the deck and wired directly into the electrical system in the boat and charging the batteries. The solar panel is made out of a very strong material and you can actually walk on the panel without damaging the cells inside of it. And the solar panel produces 48 watt. This is the best possible position to produce power when sailing and being inside of the marina. Here you see the passive ventilation for the head. Here on both sides of the deck, you see the general tracks. You can put these Genoa tracks in the position wanted so you have the perfect trim on the Genoa. And because it's possible to reef the Genoa, you will also use this when you have reefed the Genoa to have the perfect trimming position. Here you find the additional round hatch that opens directly into the main cabin. Here you see the mast base. We have developed the Dragonfly 28, so the mast is standing directly on the deck here on the, here on the mast base. The lines you see here coming through the mast base is the control lines for the sensor board. Here at the mast base, you also find the sockets for the top navigation light, the VHF antenna, and also the deck light. The mast base here is also designed so all lines from the mast and the control lines for the sensor board are guided out in these deck organizers and are led directly back into the cockpit. Here on the side of the deck, you'll see the stripe work. You can choose whatever color you like, so it matches to the color of the boat. This stripe work is standard and comes with the boat. All anti-skid you see here on the deck is painted directly into the mold, so you won't see any kind of changes in the colors on the structure, even after years of use. Here on this side of the boat, you'll find the inlet for the freshwater tank. The freshwater tank is 90 liters. On the opposite side, in the same position, you'll find the outlet of the wastewater. The tank for the wastewater is 60 liters. I just want to tell you a little bit about the trampoline here. The trampoline is a great spot for working with your sails, relaxing, sunbathing, and actually just give you the ability to walk around the boat without concerning falling into the water or anything like that. The trampoline also gives you direct access to the float by using the hatch. Regarding the lifespan of the trampolines, you have to replace them every 12 to 15 years. In the sunny parts of the world, you can experience that the stitches are worn out by the sun and the UV. Therefore, you may have to restitch the trampoline every five to seven years. Right here next to me, you see the deck attachment for the mast racing system. On our website, you can find a complete video explaining the mast racing system. 
So here I am in the cockpit of the Dragonfly 28. I'll now demonstrate how to fold the boat in and out and demonstrate how the swing wing system works. Before the procedure, you have to remember to fold in the bowsprit and remove the safety cable we have here on front of the wing. I will now put on the fold in line here on the winch and open the clutch under the cockpit combing. And once you're done, close the clutch, and that's it. As you can see, it's done by using no tools and it's done in less than a minute. When the boat is folded, it is designed to push down the outriggers in the water and actually lift the main hole, so it's a lot more stable when you are in the marina. I would now like to demonstrate how to fold out the boat. First, I put on the fold out line here on the winch. Put on the winch handle, open the clutch under the cockpit combing, and then it's just start winching. And that is done. I just have to remember to close the clutch under the cockpit combing and attach the safety cable. Now I'm here in the cockpit and I want to show you the different features here inside of the cockpit. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about the navigation instruments. All navigation instruments for the Dragonfly 28 are optional. Here on board, the customer have ordered three displays here on top of the companionway. Usually, we see that customers order two displays here on top of the companionway. Here you also see the customer have ordered this 12 volt outlet. And down here, you see we have this 9 inch GPS plotter, which is a usual setup. As explained earlier, all lines are led back here to the cockpit from the mast base and they are all handled by these clutches you see here on top of the companionway. The two inches you see here on top are standard and comes with the Dragonfly 28. As an option, you can choose to have these winches as self-tailing. Here on both sides of the cockpit, on the cockpit combing, you find these Anderson self-tailing winches. These are used for the Jenniker and the Code Zero, and also for the barber hole. As you saw earlier, we also use these winches for the swing wing lines you see here. As explained earlier, both the barber hole, the preventer and the backstay are led into the cockpit and you can control them here under the cockpit combing on both sides. Underneath the cockpit seat here, you'll find the controls for the engine. As demonstrated earlier, the engine has power tilt and also an electrical starter. You have also a lot of storage opportunities in here. For example, the washboards are placed in here, the shore power cable, and also you have room for fenders. And you can, as you can see here, we have this fire extinguisher. 
Here on the port side of the cockpit, we also have a bigger locker. In here you could store like mooring lines, extra sheets, fenders, and you also have the propane bottle in here for the cooker inside the boat. With this telescopic tiller extension, you have numerous positions to home the boat. As you can see, I'm sitting here inside the cockpit, but you have also the opportunity to sit here on the foldable seat, to sit higher and have a great view over the boat to navigate and see what's coming in front of you. Also, when the spray hood is up. To make it even more comfortable, we offer this back wrist polster for the push pit. Here in the bottom of the cockpit, you find this bracket. This is used for the cockpit table. I'll now demonstrate how to set up this cockpit table. So, as you can see, it's very easy to set up and you can easily sit four people here in the cockpit having dinner, breakfast or lunch. Here in the locker, at the transom of the boat, you see we have two fuel tanks. The red one is for gasoline and is for the engine. The black one is for the diesel heater inside the boat. Here in the back of the cockpit, you see we have this manual bilge pump. This is used for the bilge in the main cabin. The boat also comes with an electrical bilge pump which you can switch on in the electrical panel inside the boat. As an option, you can choose to have a sound system inside of the boat and you can also choose to have these loudspeakers here inside the cockpit. As the other boats in the Dragonfly range, the Dragonfly 28 also has this swing sensor board. You can see the sensor board trunk which is under the table in the main cabin here. You control the sensor board by two lines, you have the fold, fold down line here and you have the board up line here on the other side. When you have pulled the board all the way down, you put the line into this spring-loaded clamp cleat we have over here. This cleat will pop up if the board is exposed to a certain amount of force, which means that you will not experience any kind of damage on the board if you hit ground. The board is actually buoyant, that means when you release the board down line, it will actually float up into the trunk. The board up line also secures the board to stay in the trunk when you're lifting or trailing the boat. Now I want to tell you some more about the main sheet. As you probably can see here, it's a 1 to 32 purchase and it's included with a fine tuner. When you can't fine tune the sheet anymore by hand because there's too much power on the sheets, you can take this tuner, put it on the winch, and then you can get the perfect trim with full control over the winches. When you're performing with the boat, there's a lot of power here on the main sheet. So it's a very nice option to be able to put the sheet here onto the winches on the cockpit combing. As an option here on the Dragonfly 28, you can get this very nice spray hood to give you shelter when sailing. In general, the boat is very dry to sail, but of course, in higher speed, you will experience that the wind is quite strong and therefore it's nice to have this spray hood as a actually windshield. I will now demonstrate how to fold up this spray hood. So as you can see, you can sit here, sheltered from the wind and spray, and sit comfortably and enjoy your ride. As another option, we offer this cockpit tent. This cockpit tent you can combine with the spray hood, so you have a nice outdoor area here in the cockpit when you are in the marina. I'll now demonstrate how to set up this cockpit tent.
Now both the cockpit tent and the spray hood is folded up and as you can see there's plenty of headroom here inside of the cockpit tent and for your reference I am 1.92 meters so I would say there's plenty of room for, uh, for a guy like me. So yeah, here you can sit nice and comfortable with, uh, with your friends and family and you can even sit here six people around the table. And as you can see the tent can open here in the back and it can also open here on the sides with these zipper solutions. And as you maybe have noticed, there's no tiller inside of the cockpit right now. It's because it's possible to leave it on the outside and tilt it backwards behind the boat so you have even more space here inside of the cockpit tent. Now I have moved inside of the Dragonfly 28. I would now like to show you the different features and options here inside the boat. For your reference, I am 1.92 meters tall, so I have something to compare to when I'm walking around the boat. As you can see here inside of the Dragonfly 28, it is quite spacious. Even though it's only 28 foot, I actually sit here quite comfortable with a good headroom considering my height. When I sit here, I have a great view over the boat through the big windows here in the deck. As an option, we offer shades here for the window for privacy. Above me, we have this round hatch you saw earlier, where we have this nice sunshade. Where I'm sitting now can actually be made into one and a half bunk. I'll now show you how it's done. As you can see, I have now made the couch to a two meter long bunk within 30 seconds. Here on the side, underneath the couch and the cushions, we actually have storage. So here you can leave your life vests, security lines, extra food, extra to drink, whatever you like. For sitting around the table, you can fold it up as I show here. And to rest your feet, because this couch is quite high, we have made this footrest here. And then you can fold up the other side of the table. So as you can see here, it's actually a quite big cabin table where there's a lot of space for sitting here with their friends and family. As an option, we offer indirect ambient light here above the side windows. The wooden interior you see here inside the boat is maple and is a very light sort of, of wood. But you can also choose the slightly darker elm wooden interior. Regarding the cushions here inside the boat, you can choose between a broad variety of design and colors. The standard floor has a white gel coat finish. But you can also choose between the carpet, as you see here, and a elm wooden floor. Here under the table, we actually have the center board trunk. It's completely sealed off and you control the center board with the control lines in the cockpit. Right under the carpet, the owner of this boat has ordered the optional extra 60 liter cool box. If not used for the cool box, it's extra storage. Now I'm here in the forward cabin and as you can see it's actually quite spacious. Plenty of room for two people. It is two meters long and you actually have some storage here for your clothes above your feet. We have this, we have this uh, front hatch where we have this uh, optional mosquito net and, uh, and sun blind. It's also optional to get sun blinds for these port lights. And underneath the bunk, we have extra storage for personal belongings. On each corner here in the forward cabin, we have LED lights so you can read a book when you're about to sleep. And here we have sliding doors for privacy. And here in the very front of the bunk, we have an outlet for the heater. Now I'm here in the head of the Dragonfly 28. And as you can see, it's a quite simple setup with a mirror, 
with a tap that is pressurized directly from the freshwater 90 liter tank. And down here, you can see we have a toilet with a manual flush. And up here, you can see we have a gauge that shows the level of the 60 liter holding tank. There is a sliding door that closes the connection between the main cabin and the head. And here on the starboard side of the head, we have this cupboard. Here on the starboard side of the galley, I just wanted to show the few features we have here. As you can see over here, we have the socket for the 230 volt. It only works with show power. Here you'll see the, the cool box. It's 45 liters, so it's actually quite big and you can use it for, for all your food and drinks. Here we have the sink. Standard, you get the pressurized freshwater tap. It's connected directly into the 90 liters freshwater tank. Right next to the freshwater tap, we have the pressurized optional salt water tap. And as you can see here on my far right, we have a lot of storage for all your kitchen equipment. And right under the galley, you have plenty of storage for your kitchen equipment. And right here, you see the main fuse for the shore power. So here on the port side of the galley, we have this two burner propane stove with controls and easy to use. The propane cooker is optional. As the starboard side, you have plenty of storage here for your kitchen equipment. And here behind the cooker, we have a cupboard. And here above the galley, you see the optional VHF radio. And to the left of the VHF radio, you'll find the handset for the VHF. And here in the corner, we have the control for the heating system. Right next to the control of the heating system, you'll find the switch and fuse panel. On this boat, we have the sound system that is placed right above the fuse and switch panel. And right here above, we have the charge regulator for the solar panels. All LED lights in the cabin can be turned on and off by pressing the bulb. And right under the port galley, we have this drawer for cutlery. And here you also find extra storage. And we have here the, uh, the main switch for the electrical system in the boat and the engine. In here you also find the valve for the propane system. The entrance stairs here can move from side to side to give better access to the aft cabin. And under the middle step you have room for a bin. To give even better access to the aft cabin we have developed a system so we can move the entrance stairs away so we have plenty of room to enter the aft cabin. Now I have entered the aft cabin. As you can see it's actually quite spacious for a 28 foot boat. It's 2 meter long and you can easily sleep here one adult or two children. As you can see here the escape hatch and the optional port light gives a lot of light into the aft cabin and gives you a spacious feeling. And right behind me, you have room for extra storage. On the port side here on the aft cabin, we have two LED lights here and here right next to my, my head. It's standard that comes with the boat. And right behind the entrance stairs, you'll have the storage for the cockpit table. And right here next to the entrance of the aft cabin, we have this little bookshelf. I hope you enjoyed uh, the guided tour with my son Peter on the, on the Dramlight 28. And as you see, this is a fantastic boat with many details. If you like sailing, it's very, very difficult not to look at trimarines like this. It's so much fun, it's a new world. And I hope you enjoyed this and that you will uh, contact us for further information and or our dealer network. And we hope to see you someday in a dragonfly. And thank you for watching.